I want to share with you yung malaking kabaliwan na ginawa ni Abraham sa kanyang pag-aalay ng kanyang anak, which is the first fruit, no? Okay? Ito po'y matatagpuan natin sa Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 to 19. And let us just read some of the verses. Sometime later, sabi sa verse 1 ng Genesis chapter 22, God tested Abraham. Sabi nga natin, God tested Abraham. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. Uli din natin. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. Sabi mo sa katabi, humanda ka. Okay. Sometime later, maybe this year, maybe next year, maybe next month, God will test you. Okay? And anong, anong test? Sabi ni Lord, offer to me your son, your only son, a three days journey. That is, your three days journey, it's a prolonged agony. Pinatagal pa ng Diyos ang paghihirap ni Abraham. Meron mo three days, aakit ka sa Mount Moriah, which is the Jerusalem temple ngayon. Okay? Uh, three days of suffering. No? Nagdurugo ang kanyang puso sa bawat hakbang niya. Imagine, alam niya na iaalay niya kanyang anak. That's no joke, mga kapatid. Sana ma- magets niyo yan. No? Sana magkaroon ng revelation sa inyo na nautusan ka ng Diyos na iaalay mo ang, kanyang, ang iyong anak at tapos three days journey pa. Tapos paakit pa. At ang matinding uh, sitwasyon eh, pagkakit nila yung conversation ng kanyang ng magama sabi niya tang andito na yung apoy andito na yung panggatong nasaan ang iaalay and then cool na cool pero I believe is bleeding inside crying inside sabi niya God Almighty will provide my son and then nung inaayos inaayos na niya ah uh, yung altar and then tinali ng kanyang anak doon na realize ni Isaac he was the offering and as for Isaac for Abraham saludong saludo ako sa kanyang ginawa yung calmness niya yung faith and obedience niya yung prolonged suffering niya na nakapag persevere and then tinali ang kanyang anak binuhat niya nilagay sa altar he realized Isaac realized that he was the offering. And when he's about to kill his son, the angel of the Lord appeared. Uh, do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. And then sabi ng angel, now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son, And then, of course, the Lord provided uh, uh, an offering sa mga magkita ng isang ram. And then, ito yung magandang sinabi ni Lord. I want you, the angel of the Lord called to Abraham for the second time. Ito mo kanyang sinabi. This is the powerful word that I want you to see. No? Sabi ni Lord, I swear by myself. Wala nang ibang mas mataas pa kay Lord na kung saan siya ay manumpa. So, siya ay sumumpa sa kanyang sarili. I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, this is the second time, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the as the sand in the seashore. Your descendants will take possessions of the cities of their enemies, and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Then, of course, they return and those things. In verse 3, I want you to examine, let us examine again 
Sabi ng Bible, when God told Abraham to offer his son on a three days journey sa Mount Moriah, he rose early in the morning. Hindi na po siya, sana makita natin, hindi siya siya nagpapetik-petik. Hindi na siya nagatubili. Immediately, he obeyed the Lord. He rose early in the morning, went to the place of which God had told him. He obeyed immediately, went to the exact place where the Lord had appointed. There he offered his son Isaac to the Lord. Grabbing pananalig, grabbing pagsunod, at grabbing pagmamahal sa Diyos. At nakita ng Diyos, kasi nung wala pa si Isaac, all-hearted ang puso ni Abraham kay Lord. Nakafocus kay Lord. Nung nagkaroon na siya ng anak, na unti-unti hindi na-realize ni Abraham, unti-unti nawawala ang kanyang focus kay Lord at naptuon na ngayon sa kanyang anak niya si Isaac. And God knows best. He has to do something to save both Abraham and his son. So ang ginawa ng Diyos, offer him, this is a test of love, of loyalty, a test of faith. Kaya, yun po, the bottom line, Abraham passed the test with flying colors. His devotion to God was exemplified by what he did, he did not withhold. Because of his willingness to offer his first and best, God was greatly impressed, the Bible says. Now, I want to share with you the prophetic promise versus the sworn oath. Lahat po tayo ay may pinangahawakan pangako ng Diyos. All of us, out of more than 8,000 promises of God in His Word, both Old and New Testament, I know some of you, meron kayong pinangahawakan pangako ng Diyos. Okay? Uh, nung ako'y binata, gustong-gusto ko ang Psalm 37 verse 4, Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give the girl, my dream girl, I wanted. Okay? Marami po nagpipray niyan. Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and the boyfriend or the girlfriend will be added unto you. Or the house, or the car, or the promotion, or the business, and it will be added unto you. Huh? There's so much promises of God. Psalm 23, verse 1, The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. So from, from prophetic promise, or promises to sworn oath. So, the truth is, God repeatedly, tandaan niyo po ito, nung pagkatapos manumpa ng Diyos, sinabi muli ng Diyos, paulit-ulit actually, two, uh, three to four times, uh, binanggit ng Diyos, na uh, He made these prophetic promises to Abraham. Chapter 12, chapter 13, chapter 15, even in chapter, and then inulit niya sa chapter 22, even in chapter 18. Sabi ni Lord, uh, make him into a great nation, sun by the seashore, stars in the sky. Ganyang, ganyang magiging karami ang kanyang lahi. Titingin siya sa langit, ganon ang dami ng kanyang lahi. Titingin siya Sa lupa, ganon din ang dami na kanyang lahi. That is the prophetic promise of God to Abraham. I will make you into a great nation. Lahat po tayo. Ako po. Nakalagay dyan sa ating marker. 30 years ago, I dreamt of this worship center. It took me 30 years. I almost gave up. But the Lord with His mercy and grace... I held on to it. And now it became a reality. Wag lang po tayong bumigay, wag lang tayong uh, mawala ng pasensya. If we are patient, if we are persistent, if we will persevere, surely and absolutely, mapapasa atin po, repeatedly, 
pull it, pull it. Every now and then, God reminds us of His promises to us, of His goodness to us. Bibigyan kita, pagpapalayan kita, magtatagumpay ka, gagaling ka, papasa ka, ha? yayaman ka. These are the promises of God to all of us, but wag lang tayong bumigay. Hindi po sasablay ang mga pangako ni Lord. There are something greater that I want you to see. First, we must see that, that through the first fruits offering, Abraham activated God's promises by sowing seed in behalf of them. We must consecrate every promise we have, to, we have from God by offering on their behalf. I want to emphasize in you, ilan taon na tayo pinangahawakan ang mga pangako ng Diyos? Bakit hanggang ngayon, wala pa? Ilang taong mo nang kiniklaim na ikaw ay magtatagong pa, na ikaw ay gagaling, na ikaw ay magkaroon ng bahay at lupa, na ikaw magkaroon ng sakyan, na magkaroon ng maraming pera. Ilang taon na? But through this, the promises of God will only be activated when we consecrate it. The word consecrate is the word for mag-alay. Or sa layman term, tamnan natin ang inihingi natin kay Lord. Tamnan natin. Will you want a harvest? You want a house and lot? Kung meron nagpapagawa, ba't di ka magtanim ng simento, hollow blocks, o kaya yero? When I was praying na magkaroon kami ako ng bahay at lupa, I was sowing kahit na simento lang, kahit na yero lang. Meron ako nakita ng kapatid na nagpapagawa. Sabi niya sa akin, kahit na isang yero lang. Yun lang kaya ko noon eh, isang yero. Tamnan natin. Kung tayo nagpipray ng sasakyan, tamnan natin. Kung merong nagpipray ng sasakyan, tamnan mo kahit na isang gulong. O ito, isang gulong pa lang. Yung isang gulong sa akin na. Magkano isang gulong? Let's say 5,000 pesos. So something. Kung kayo ay may business, do something about it. Consecrate. The promises of God. Tamnan mo. Okay? Do some consecration. Sowing seed in behalf of the promises of God. Activated. God's power and God's promises will be activated by consecrating it. Pag-aalay po. Pagtatanim. Alam niyo po, in my desperateness, I, I, I think I have shared with you. When I went to Bogota, I have more than $1,000 with me. I saved them for three years. Kasi pinatandala na ako ng auntie ko ng $25, $30. And then you po, for three weeks, uh, three years, nakapag-save ako ng more than $1,000. Ang dream ko, to buy my first laptop computer. Usong-uso po noon. 2000, usong-uso po. 2001, usong-uso ang laptop computer. So I have more than $1,000. I believe I could buy one. Pero no, nandun ako sa Bogota, the Lord and the Spirit of God touched me. You want the church to grow? You want the FBC to, have exper to experience explosion and expansion and breakthrough? Then, Give me all the dollars you have. Alam mo ba ang aking pagipagbunong bunong braso kay Lord? Up to two o'clock in the morning. Hindi po ako na tutulog ang sarap ng higaan ko na hotel at di ako makatulog. Grabe ang struggle. Sabi ko Lord, I want the church to experience breakthrough, but I need this money. But the Spirit of the Lord is so strong upon me. Sabi ni Lord, give it to me as a seed for breakthrough. You know, sumuko po ako at 2 o'clock in the morning. And then nilagay ko kay sobre. And then nilagay ko po seed offering for the breakthrough ng TFBC. And as a result, look at this. That was 2001 of January. And now after... 18 years, the Lord look at what happened from a small church to a big church like this. 
If you want God's promises be activated sa buhay natin, the promises we are holding, tamnan po natin. And I tell you, try it. Don't doubt it. Ang iba sa atin kasi, uh, masyado tayong nag-iisip eh. Ah, at tapos, kinocompute natin ang pangangailangan natin. But this is faith and this is how God works. We must consecrate ang lahat ng pangako ng Diyos na pinanghawakan natin uh, by offering on, the beh on behalf of the promises of God. And this is, you will know why, Hannah, hindi na-realize ni Hannah ang mga pangako ng Diyos until she offered Samuel kay Lord. Binigyan siya. Finally, the Lord answered her prayer. After many long years, God answered her prayers. And the moment dumating si Samuel, hindi lang niya tinamnan ng pangako ng Diyos, binigay niya ang kanyang anak na si Samuel and he became the greatest prophet of all time. Pagkatapos si Samuel, binigyan siya ng Diyos ng tatlong anak na lalaki at dalawa pang babae. Five children and they are all blessed according to 1 Kings chapter 1. And you can see that in verse 10 to 20. Now, yes, we must consecrate. Dapat mag-alay tayo of everything we hold in our heart through a first fruit offering to the Lord so the blessing of God can come in the fullest sense. And these things is being done by faith. Don't do it without, kung kayo po ay napapasubo lang o kaya kung kayo po ay napipilitan lang, these things, it is an act of faith and obedience just like Hannah did, just like uh, Abraham did in offering the first fruit. Because the first fruit activates and empowers the promises of God. Abraham consecrated and activated all that God said to him through his first fruits offering. And what is the first fruit offering? Giving up his son, Abraham, uh, Isaac. Number two, when Abraham offered Isaac as his first fruits, that which had been a prophetic promise, became a sworn oath. Ang pinangako ng Diyos sa Genesis chapter 12, I will make you into a great nation. In chapter 13, in chapter 15, like the stars in the skies, like the sun in the seashore, ganyang karami ang magiging anak mo, sabi ni Lord kay Abraham. So, from a prophetic promises, or promise, became a sworn oath. By myself, sabi ni Lord, because of your offering of your only son, one and only son, by myself, sabi ni Lord, I sworn, says the Lord, God swore, but not just promise, but a sworn oath to fulfill the spoken word. The question is this, anong pagkakaiba ng prophetic promise and a sworn oath? Ang mga pangako ng Diyos, it all depends sa ating pananalig at pagsunod. At hindi tayo sumunod, hindi mangyayari. Lahat ng mga prophetic promises of God to us, it all depends by our faith and obedience. Failing to, uh, to activate our faith and obedience, then the promises of God will never happen. Hindi po mangyayari na ikaw ay magtatagumpay kung hindi ka mananalik at susunod kay Lord. Hindi ka gagaling kung hindi ka makipag-cooperate kay Lord at magkaroon ng disiplina. Hindi ka magtatagumpay. Hindi ka pagpabalain kung hindi tayo susunod kay Lord. It all depends. They are, in other words, they are conditional. The, sword, the, the promises of God, the prophetic promises of God are conditional at sila po ay nakasalalay sa ating pananalig at pagsunod. But, a sworn oath, the moment you, you without reservation, nung sabihin ng Diyos, 
immediately early in the morning you went to that mountain and offered your Isaac just like Abraham then from prophetic promises it will become a sort of oath by myself I swear there is no other greater than God no God greater than God so ang Dios he made a covenant to himself a promise to, to himself that he will surely fulfill what he promised K Abraham why God made a sworn oath to Abraham simply lang because of his radical unbelievable and imaginable obedience K Lord in offering his one and only son Pwede mag-alay ng baka eh. Pwede mo bigay ang bahay at lupa mo eh. Pwede mo bigay ang expensive watch mo eh. Pwede mo bigay ang first fruit, o, yung, ang yung one month salary, three month salary, six month salary, pero your one and only son. You waited for 25 years for your son. He waited for 25 years bago nagkaroon ng anak. And then here comes the Lord, parang sadista. No, hindi po sadista si Lord. He wants to know kung sino talaga ang number one sa puso mo. And then God saw, now I know, sabi ni Lord. Now I know, because of your act of obedience, now I know, hindi lang now I know, I swear by myself that I'm going to fulfill all the promises that I have given to you. Praise God. Palabangan natin si Lord. When we dare obey the Lord in first fruits and so to consecrate that which He hold in our hearts. Ano bang, ano bang pinakamahalaga sa'yo? Marami sa atin, madaling ibigay yung mga segunda mano, ordinary lang, hindi mo na kailangan, no? And what is that so important in your heart? Ano ba yung pinakamahalaga sa'yo? Iyan ang gusto ni Lord. Ayaw niya yung second class, yung medya lang. Okay? Gusto niya ang pinakamahalaga sa atin. Okay? Not only do we activate the promises given, we can actually see the promises become a sworn oath that God Himself will see that they come to pass no matter what. This is what happened to Abraham and can and will happen to us as we choose and dare to step into these dimensions of first fruits. It's an act of faith to experience the realm the spiritual realm, the unstoppable, uncontrollable blessing of the Lord. But where did Abraham find such courage and faith to obey the Lord on this level? Saan galing ang kanyang pananalig? Ang kanyang ganitong pagsunod? Bakit niya nagawa ito? Okay? Dito, I want you to see na iba yung mindset ni Abraham sa real plan ni Lord kay Abraham. Okay? The answer is simple. God's promises to Abraham were that he would be the father of nations. Abraham recognized that one boy is not a nation, much less nations. He discerned that Isaac was not the fullness of the promise, but he is the seed to the promise na correct ang kanyang mindset. Akala ni Abraham, Abra si Isaac is the fulfillment of the promise. After offering his son, he realized that Isaac was the seed to the promise. Now, I hope makita niyo to, no? Ang binhi ay mananatiling binhi 
if it's still in your hands. The seed I have, if it is a money or whatever it is, the seed I have in my hand, it will remain seed. Kahit ano mangyari, my hand cannot germinate the seed para ito ay tumubo. At pagka tumubo yan, lalaki at mamumunga, it cannot happen until it's uh, uh, hanggang nasa kamay ko. The seed will remain a seed until uh, uh, hanggang nasa kamay ko. Magiging, magmumultiply lang ang seed when I release it. And it will germinate, and it will grow, and it will bear much fruit. Habang, ah, habang ang binhi nasa kamay mo, it will remain a seed. The money that is in your bank account and in your wallet will remain just seed. But the moment you release it, wala na sa, wala na sa kapangyarihan mo. Habang nasa kamay mo, mayroon ka bang kapangyarihan to control it. But the moment you release the seed, wala na ka ng kapangyarihan, that is where the hand of God who is in complete control, siya nang bahala. That's why, if you are an un illogical thinker, analytical thinker, mahirap eh. What's so simple? While the seed is in your hand, it will remain seed. Pero ang taong maramot, naghihinayang, he won't release it. Kaya, it will remain a seed. But to those people who are radical or obedient who are desperate enough to see the promises of God fulfilled, then release. This is what exactly Abraham did. He passed the test with flying colors. Three days journey, knowing in his mind and in his heart that his son is the offering. Sabi nga ng aking professor eh, bawat hagbang ni Abraham, eh, hindi man nakatingin sa lupa, eh, sa kanyang dinadaanan eh, nakatingin sa kanyang anak. At kung pwede lang kung maglakad, because this is the last three days, natapos ang one day, this is the last two days, the last day, last hour, last minute, to be with my son, and to see my son, But he did it. To him, Isaac is the main thing, pinakamahalaga sa kanyang puso. And yet, he offered it to the Lord. So he thought Isaac was the promise. After offering Isaac, he realized he is just a seed. At nong Nagkasawa si Isaac, dalawang anak niya. Alam niyo ba si Bot Jacob at saka si Esau, they have 12 children. Both of them, they have 12 children. They multiplied tremendously because finally Abraham realized and discovered that Isaac was only a seed. And once, once, once Isaac was released, the Lord finally multiplied and fulfilled His promise. Many believers think that they are holding their promises. The truth is that which you have is not the promise. It is but seed to the promise. If you take that which you love and sow it as an offering to the Lord, that which you love will become your first fruits and set in motion unspeakable blessings into your life and family. God will always give you seed to the fullness of the promise. He gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10 to 11. The fullness of the promise hangs in the balance of what you do with that seed. Mananatili ba sa kamay mo? 
or you will release it. Habang hawak mo, it's you are in complete control. And the moment you release it, God is in control already. That's why it will begin to multiply. Question, what is your Isaac? What is your precious seed? Your Isaac and precious seed is the key to your breakthrough. If you willingly and will heartily offer it to the Lord as first fruits, then like Abraham, you will experience from prophetic promise to a sworn oath. I saw Ati Edith sa Koron. Tapos na kami mag-offering. Sabi niya sa akin, Darling, let's go inside the house ni Pastor Chris and his wife. Let's pray for them. So we went inside. We prayed for them. And then after praying, bigla niyang inuhubad ang Sisterhood Watts. Sisterhood Watts is the gift of Dr. Adaxi to all my sisters, including Ate Edith. Expensive Watts. And then, nung naibigay na, sinuot niya sa kamay ng pastor's wife, nung lumabas kami, sabi ko, Darling, do you know that that Watts is the sister, sisterhood Watts? Lahat ng mga makakapatid, mga kapatid ko kailangan meron ganyan. Sabi niya, hindi ko alam. Pero sabi ko, congratulations, you did what is right. And then pumunta kami ng lunes, nagbe-breakfast kami, kinukukwento yung journey namin sa Koron, sa Davao, what we're doing. And then sabi ko, pwede na bang magtapat? Sabi ko, Daxi, do you know that Ate Edith gave up the sisterhood watch? Alam mo, instead na magali si Daxi tuwan-tuwan, umakit sa kagad sa second floor, pinalitan na. Lahat ng mga kapatid ko na watch nila, wala silang bato. Yung kay Ate Edith, may bato ngayon. Eh, merong bato sa loob yun. Para kay Daxi yun. Kung baga sana, ordinary ang mga kapatid ko, pero yung suot-suot ni Ate Edith, yan ang pinaka the best. Why? Because she gave the best. You cannot outgive the Lord. Sabi ko, sabi ko na, sana kay Daxi, sabi ko, Dax, pwede na ba yung isang Cartier mo, kaya yung Rolex watch mo? Sabi siya, kasi daming collectors ng watch yung kapatid ko eh. Yung mga expensive watch. Pero binigay niya yung pinaka the best na sa mga sisterhood watch. And let me, let me close with this. Meron baluga. Patagal niya kasi hindi ka nakarinig yung baluga. May kasalanan nito eh. Wanted. Hanggang na corner, pinagbabaril siya. Pero hindi na mamatay. Pero punong-puno ng bala, binaril dito, kahit saan, pinagbabaril hindi siya namamatay. Eh, yung isang polis, being a Sunday school teacher, na-realize niya yung Matthew 6.21. Paki, ano mo nga yung Matthew 6.31? 21? Matthew 6.21. Nagkaroon ng, uh, pumasok sa kanyang mind, ang Matthew 6.21. Okay? Pakita mo nga, Matthew 6.21. Jesus said, For where your treasure is, There your heart will be also. Matthew 6, 21. So, binaril siya kahit saan, hindi na matay. Alam mo kung saan niya binaril? Yung wallet niya mismo. Binaril niya yung wallet niya, doon siya na matay. Narealize niya ang Sinabi ni Jesus sa Matthew 6:21, For where your treasure is, in other words, in other words, sa layman's term, for where your wealth, your money is, diyan din ang iyong puso. Kaya hirap na hirap ang mga tao to release the seed. 
that is so precious to them dahil iyon ang kanilang puso eh. But at the moment my release what is so precious important to you from a prophetic promise will become a sworn oath. You know why? No more selfishness. Suddenly you are free to selfishness and the blessing of the Lord will begin to flow. Thank you, Lord.